Let me share the fifth one with you. Not only the fear of illnesses, not only the fear of loss of love, not only the fear of criticism, not only the fear of poverty, but the fifth one is the fear of old age. You know, it's amazing how you're in a certain age bracket and how your perspective on life changes. I can remember as a teenager, I don't know, 15, 16 years old, the driver's license stage. And I can remember me and some of the guys hanging out together and we go over to their parents' house. They'd be old, 35, 38. Man, they're a bunch of old fogies, you know? I mean, these people are old, you know? They don't understand. They're not in the groove, you know? Oh, man. I got a long way if I hit that. When you become 30, 35, your perspective changes. In fact, you even have people that are older than you say, you know what? You're still wet behind the ears. Thank you. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> and then you reach certain ages. As I said in the next you know, being 48, statistically speaking, chances are I have more years behind me than I do in front of me. I don't know. It doesn't really make no difference. I can't do much about that. Right. But you know, when you think about it, you get a certain age and how your life has changed since the time you were a teenager to the time you get older. And you begin to think differently. And, and when you've got a fear of old age, what usually runs through your mind is, I can no longer do the things I once did. I, I can't be as productive. You know what? People don't want me around anymore because I can't do the things or I'm not productive as I once was. And besides, they have their own life. They don't want me bothered. That's the flesh thinking. The Spirit says, you never get too old to serve God. Amen. The Spirit says there's no retirement in the Lord's Word. The Spirit tells me, the Word of God tells me, that the older you get, the more wisdom that you should have. And the more wisdom that you have, the more wisdom you should share with the younger ones. And the more or the better example you ought to be for younger people. Try. And yes, listen carefully. Yes, we are one step closer to going home with the Lord. Amen. But always remember this. God has a purpose for your life. That's the reason why you're here right now. So when you got a fear of old age, hey, you know, there's a thing that says, what am I going to do? I can't do it anymore. I'm not as productive as I want to be. But at the same time, the Spirit tells me, you know what? God got me here for a reason. Amen. Years ago, I was talking to my doctor. I had a physical. And he was telling me, he said, Mike, I'll tell you something about life. He said, people seem to want retirement more than anything. He said, this is my experience. He said when people retire in life from their jobs, vocation, whatever they are, their occupations, when they retire, if they decide that I'm going to do nothing, I'm going to kick back, rest, sleep, and do nothing. He says in my experience, every patient I've had like that within two or three years has died physically. On the other hand, he said I've got patients that retired 20 and 30 years ago and they're still active. Amen. Same thing in the Lord's work. God's got you here for a purpose. If God wanted you gone, He would take you. So when you talk about the fear of age, always remember this. God has got me here for a purpose. Yes, I'm one step closer to going home, but God's got me here for a reason. Amen? Amen. Amen. So number five is the fear of old age. Let me share the sixth and final with you final one with you. It's called the fear of death. The fear of death. The flesh tells me, <laughs> you ain't got too much longer. Life on earth is short. You better enjoy it while you can. You better do this. You better do that. Because you may not be here tomorrow. The Spirit tells me in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55 to 57, <laughs> It tells me, bring it on. It tells me, where's the sting of death? Where's the suffering of death? I know Jesus. And you know what? The day I physically die, life will just begin. Amen. 
No more heartaches. No more pains. And no more sorrows. In heaven, forever and ever and ever. You ever thought about the expression that we use periodically to describe things? You go someplace or you do something. Man, this is just like heaven. Don't we say that? This is, well, what do you mean by that? Amen. What you're explaining is this is great. This, this is something I always wanted. This is great. This is just like heaven. Well, you know what? When I think about the fear of dying and I'm saved, that's what I want. I want heaven. I like that better than the alternative. Please say amen on that one. If not, you people are sick. Right? You all need help. But the Spirit says, you know what? Oh, death, where is thy sting? I have victory in Jesus. The worst thing that could ever happen to me is I die. The best thing that could ever happen to me is I die. Right. Amen? Amen. So when we look at the common fears, let me go back to, uh, to, to, to Psalms 34, 4. David said, I sought the Lord. And He heard me, and I del He delivered me from all my fears. These are six of the most common fears people experience today. And you got a choice. Number one, you can trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Or number two, you can lean towards your own understanding. That's the battle between the Spirit and the flesh. You can be lean in me, or you can trust in the rust. Would you bow your heads, please? With every head bowed and every eye closed. This morning, as Miss Tina and Debbie, if you would come. We're going to have a song of invitation this morning. And this invitation is for whosoever. This invitation is for everyone. This invitation is for anyone. You may be here this morning. And you say, Brother Mike, I'm not sure I'm born of the Spirit. I'm not born again. Yes, I'm born naturally, but I've never been born again. Well, it's time that you understood you're held accountable. If you understand that you're a sinner, and you understand that you're in need of a Savior, there's an accountability on your part. Are you willing to surrender your life to Jesus? Ask Him to come in your life and to forgive you of your sins and save you. The Bible says that if you're willing to do that and you truly mean it, that you are sealed to the day of redemption. In other words, you become part of the family of God. And maybe you're here this morning. You say, you, 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 you want to be born again. When we start singing, I'm going to ask you if you would to just come forward. Shake my hand and just say, Brother Mike, I want to be born again. Now understand something. I can't save you. But I can lead you in a simple prayer to where you can receive Christ as your Savior. You say, well, what is everybody going to think? It really makes no difference. You're the one that's held accountable. It's up to you whether you face the great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ. It's the most crucial decision you could ever make in life. Maybe you're here this morning, you've been saved. Well, you know, there's just something about doing what God wants me to do. In fact, Jesus thought baptism was so important that He did it Himself. Now, baptism doesn't seal your salvation. It doesn't, it, it doesn't, it's not a requirement to get to heaven. But it's a commandment from Jesus. He commanded us to do it. And He did it Himself. And maybe you need to come this morning and say, Brother Mike, I know that I'm saved, but I need to schedule a, a time, a date, to where I can be baptized. Why don't you come this morning? Maybe you're here this morning, and you know, you've been saved, you've been baptized, and maybe you want to join Westside. This is where God's leading you. To join right here at Westside. To be part of the family of God. And to this family. You know, it's very, very important that you become a member of a local New Testament church. 
That's how God works through His people. He, he, he doesn't do it as a lone ranger. He doesn't do it while, while we're just all individually working out there. He does it through a local church as collectively as we have different gifts and different talents. And God uses us in the local church. So maybe you need to come this morning and say, Brother Mike, I would like to join Westside. You come. You come this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and, and, and maybe you remember Westside. Maybe you're not. Maybe you just need to come to the altar and pray. Maybe God has spoken to your heart. Maybe it's something about fear. Maybe it's something that you've been praying about. Maybe you want to just come and just say, Lord, I need to get in touch with you. Whatever it is, you come this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, you know each and every heart here. God, you know where we all stand right now. And God, one of the things that we face today is the big bad wolf called fear. And Lord, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5, it tells us why we have fear. It's because we lean towards our own understanding. Lord, we looked at the six most common fears of people today. We looked at what happens when we lean towards our own understanding and we look at what happens when we trust the Lord with all our heart. And God, I pray this morning that whatever needs to be done here this morning, whether it's somebody that needs to come for salvation, baptism, join the church, or just come and pray, that God right now, the self will be moved to the side, and the Lord will follow the Spirit. Lord, this big, bad wolf called fear has an initiator behind it, an adversary behind it. As you described a roaring lion, the father of all lies, and his name is Satan. He is the one that's bound and determined to fill our hearts with fears. Lord, I pray right now that we understand this. And God, whatever you lay on our heart this morning, may we be obedient to you. For it's in Christ's name we pray.